Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to remove a white background from logos. And, uh, you know, just depending on the logo, the technique's going to be different. We'll look at a simple version with the Pixel and Bracket logo with just a really quick selection, and we're going to mask that. And then we'll look at maybe a lower quality logo that has more text in it, more colors in it, and we'll look at how to select out the white, get rid of it, and also kind of refine the mask a little bit. So there's a little bit of a masking tutorial in this, but overall I'm just going to teach you some techniques that I would use to remove some white backgrounds. So every step of this is sort of my own best practice at doing this. And what I would do is if you have these like JPEGs sitting somewhere of these logos that you need to remove the white background from because you don't have access to the original, you need to go to File and down to Place Embedded. That's how we're going to bring the logo into Photoshop. So I've already got my document open. I've created a new one. It's 1920 by 1080, so just large enough. Make sure it's larger than your logo. And we're going to go to Place Embedded, and we're going to find that logo. So I'm going to start with the Pixel and Bracket logo, which is the easier of the two. You see, all I have is a black and white logo. So I'm going to hit Enter to place that in there. And you'll notice, and I've had some people comment that when they've brought this in, See, I can just hide the background or I can unlock it and just delete the background layer by hitting the delete button, dragging it down to the trash can, whatever you want to do. We'll just delete out that white background layer. So anywhere there's checkered is transparency. What I've had people do is because a lot of people will use the eraser tool. And I believe that's over here somewhere. Yep, right there. And then they'll get this little X and they'll try to click and it'll say it must be rasterized, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to cancel. We're not going to erase anything. You guys need to learn how to mask. And masking is easy, all right? And what you need to do for this one is pretty simple. See, I'm going to use the magic wand, which is everybody's favorite tool. It almost never works, but in this case, it's actually going to work pretty well. If I click on the white area, Photoshop and the magic wand tool is going to be like, okay, I'll look for all the white stuff. And it found everything, but it doesn't look inside of objects, so I need to hold shift and notice that plus icon pops up and it's going to add, if I click, it's going to add the interior of that shape as well. So now I have everything selected outside of my logo. And over here I have my layer and as long as that layer is also selected, I can go down here to the create a mask button, add a layer mask. And when I click that, it takes that selection and it adds a mask based on it. Now what did we do? Well, it looks like our selection was reversed. So in order to invert this mask, make sure you have it selected and then go up to image down to adjustments and then invert. And that shortcut key is command I or control I on a PC. And look at that, just like that we have our logo isolated on a transparent background. And what else can I do with this? Well, let's say you wanted to, if you did have a one color logo, but you wanted to change the color to like the corporate colors or the brand standards, I can actually double click in the blank space of this layer, and that's gonna open up the layer styles, and I can go down to color overlay, which is basically, basically gonna take anything that exists on that layer outside of the mask, and it's going to apply this color to it. Notice how it's white now. I can actually, so that's a really quick way, I do that a lot, just to go from black to white or I could go to red or any other color that I wanted. I could hit OK, hit OK, and now I have that applied. Everything I've taught you here is non-destructive because everything still exists. So if I hide the color overlay and then I hold shift to hide the mask, see the X, we still have the original layer here. And because it's a smart object, it's going to retain its full quality. So if I scale this down and scale it back and hit enter and scale it back up, it retains that quality without losing it because a normal rasterized layer is going to be stretched and skewed by Photoshop every time you resize it. And every time it does that, it loses a little bit of that quality or a lot if you scale it down a lot and then try to stretch it back out. So all of these little techniques are kind of like best practices. So let's look at a little bit harder of a logo, right? So I'm going to start, actually, why don't we just, uh, well, we'll just open up a new document. New document, and then we'll do 1920 by 1080. Um, I'm just going to select a custom preset, RGB, 300 DPI, whatever, it doesn't matter. Create, okay. The background layer is white. We have that here. Okay, that's fine. Let's go File, Place Embedded, 
and we're gonna bring in that other logo. It's this other little print logo. I just found some random free logo. It's not that high quality. Um, I'm gonna bring it in, hit enter, and you'll notice how it's it's pretty fuzzy if you look at that. It's a pretty poor logo, and it's probably a logo that a lot of people will encounter. You know that that type of quality. And so you'll you'll notice that the background on this actually isn't even perfect white. It's actually an off white color. Um, and then if we go ahead and hide and delete that background layer, I'm just gonna hit the delete key. Goodbye. Uh, we have left over just this logo, and let's say this is the only access I have to this logo, and I gotta make it work. Right? A lot of times that's that's just the way it is. Um, all right, so I'm gonna remove the white on this, and with the uh, the uh, what is it called? Magic wand tool. If I click out here. Um, you know, now I gotta click inside of each one of these letters. Okay, you know, I'm st starting to click inside of those, and then I, oh my gosh, I gotta click inside these tiny letters. Like, what's it even gonna see in inside of there? This is gonna end up being a pretty crummy uh, rendition of the same technique we use. So let's forget about the magic wand tool for something as complicated as this. Instead, let's go to select and then color range, and that's gonna open up this little color range document, and it's gonna have whatever color was sampled last. Let's go down to this selection preview and first click like none. That's not going to change our image at all so that we actually can figure out what we want to select here color wise. Okay, so uh, right now I'm going to bring this fuzziness down. I'm not sure what the default is. It might be, maybe it starts at zero. It might start right in the middle. I have a little eyedropper and there's some eyedropper options down here underneath these, these, uh, these options here. And then there's also invert that's generally not selected. So we'll unselect that. We're just going to try to bring this back to the default. I want this first eyedropper and I'm going to select the color that I want to select, right? So just eyedropper into the white area, okay? Now under selection preview, I can go down to something like black matte. And what that does, or I can actually go to quick mask, looks like this. Okay, so what happened is, remember how we inverted that mask in the first version? Well, we actually want to click the invert button on this version too. So I'm going to click invert. So I'm making a selection that is the inverse of the color. Don't worry about all those complicated technical words. It's going to work out just fine. But what this does is it allows me to go to a black mat just to see what my selection or what my logo is going to look like on black based on this selection. And from here, I can adjust the fuzziness, which basically says, okay, I see what you clicked on. How many colors around that or in a certain range do you want me to look for? And the more you turn up the fuzziness, the more like colors it's going to try to find. But the higher you turn up the fuzziness, the more you're going to get into the different pieces of the logo. Notice how this blue shape here changes as I drag that down and back. And notice how the outline of the white, we start to eat into the colors a little bit. So you want to pick one that's in a sort of a medium range. that doesn't start to deteriorate the logo too much, uh, but also picks up a decent amount of the white around the logo. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm at 130. That's just sort of just depends on the logo that you have. And once I hit OK, it creates that selection. And it's actually selecting everything outside of the logo so that when we click on the, uh, the mask button, remember we have this layer down here, and I'm going to click on the mask. We've just created a selection just like the magic wand tool in a little bit of a different way. Uh, I'm going to add that mask, and it masks everything out outside of the logo based on the color selection that we made. Cool. However, let's say I add a background underneath this because right now, oh, it looks great, but it's hard to tell. So I'm going to add a shape layer and we're just going to cover the entire artboard. And from here, I'm going to drag it below my other layer. And I'm just going to double click on that rectangle and I'm going to give it a little bit of a darker color, right? It's like a darker gray. Or you know what? I got a better idea. What if I wanted to put this thing, maybe it's going on something like a darker tan color, maybe not even black and white. It's like got a little bit of color to it. I want to see how that looks on top of that color. I'm going to hit OK. Well, actually, most of this looks pretty decent, but if you zoom in here, notice how this yellow shape actually has a bit of a halo around it. Let's get in there and tweak that. What I'm going to do is select the mask of this layer. And this is where the masking tutorial sort of starts a little bit. You see, the way that a mask works is anywhere that's black, you can see through that layer. Anywhere that's white, you see the layer. Does that make sense? Because if I hide this mask holding shift, I see everything. But you'll notice on this mask that there's a lot that's painted in in black. Let's see if we can't make this thumbnail a little bit bigger. 
we got a large thumbnail now. So you see, we can actually almost read, and if I zoom in here on this, we can actually see anywhere that's black outside of our little logo is what is getting hidden out of this layer here. And anything that's white is what's getting shown. So that's the way that masking works. Well, we can actually paint on that mask layer. So let's zoom in to this little haloed yellow piece. And I'm gonna click on this masked layer over here. And I'm gonna grab a brush with the shortcut key B over here. We got a brush. And I can adjust its size and we can adjust its hardness. And I selected just a general brush. And now what happens is I have a black and a white here and I can toggle those with this little uh, toggle key, these double arrows here. That is also the X key. And if you do masking, you know the X key because the X key, you just keep going back and forth. It's like a little bit of a dance between drawing in black, drawing in white, drawing in black, undo, undo, you know, you go back and forth between all these keys. So X is to switch back and forth between those. And here's the difference. If I draw in black on this mask, important that I have the mask selected. If I draw in black, it's going to de basically delete out or hide the pieces of that layer. If I undo that with Command Z, and that's another one that you're going to hover on a lot, and then I switch with X, notice how my white is now in the front. If I draw, it's showing that layer. So it's re-showing a bunch of that white on that layer. And I can undo. So what we're going to do is go back to the black, to where we can hide this, right? You know, just hide along that edge a little bit. One little trick, to draw straight lines with the brush, if I click once, hold shift, and click again, Photoshop will draw a straight line between those two clicks. So when you have geometric shapes like this, and even when you have circular shapes, you can make little straight lines to do this, um, like if you're going around the outline of a person, what you can do is click where you want it to start and then come down here and click where you want that to finish and hold shift and it's going to draw a line along that or it's going to draw a brush stroke along that and because our brush stroke is black and because we're on the masking layer we're going to start to eat into that edge a little bit and I can do it again and again and now I'm going to go up here and actually uh, reduce the size to five points and reduce the hardness maybe to 80% so we're gonna get a little bit closer to this. So notice how my brush size is smaller. I can hold shift. And we're gonna eat away at that white that's along that edge. And then we're gonna click and do the same thing for this top edge. And I think I changed the shape a little bit on that, so you wanna be careful. I'm gonna click again. And that was just a quick undo. And I'm gonna click again, hold shift, and go through. Click again, hold shift, and go through. And you guys can sort of tweak this to your liking. And you can go through different shapes and just get rid of some of this haloing. Remember, we're drawing in black. I'm just holding shift and we're clicking along the edge of this. And for every time you click and hold shift, it's gonna keep drawing in straight lines. So I just have shift held and it's just gonna keep drawing in straight lines. So around some of these square-like shapes, it's pretty easy to uh, hold shift and just keep drawing in these straight lines and uh, keep removing some of that edge. So that's how you can sort of tweak and refine your mask a little bit. Now one other way to tweak and refine the mask other than manually doing it like that, if I double click on my mask layer, it opens up a little properties panel for that mask and it's got a bunch of properties here. And I can actually change my view mode so I can view it in black and white, on white, on black, or whatnot. And what I can do from here is actually adjust these different toggles. So the, adjust the radius of my mask, adjust the smoothing of it, adjust the feather. Uh, I can do the contrast of it, which kind of makes it a little bit too sharp for me. I can also shift the edge. So if we zoom in here, uh, we can shift the edge back of some of these letters and it's starting to eat into that white that's around that shape. But you'll notice that it's really starting to eat into some of these shapes too. So you gotta be careful with some of these. I would make small tweaks. I think the most uh, reliable adjustments will be made manually. So just to finish off some of your logos, if they have some white pieces still on them, use some of these manual painting adjustments. This is masking, this is how I would do it if I needed to sort of tweak and get this thing to look right on different colors, whether that's this tan color or it's like a lighter color, a yellow, maybe it's a red or pink sheet of paper. Notice how our logo's holding up pretty well on all of these different colors of backgrounds. So if you needed to put this logo anywhere like that, you can. Now one other cool thing, 
is because I've masked this out. Remember how we changed the color of our logo before? Well, it's an easy way to take a colored logo like this with different colors in it and actually double click here and we're gonna open up the layer styles again and we're gonna go down to color overlay and check this out. I've made it a one color logo. So if I wanted to change this to a white logo or change this to a black logo, because we have selected everything out and we've done this masking, we can do that. So it takes that selection and creates uh, an, a color overlay based on what it sees there, which is what's left of this logo that's showing. Very easy way to just kind of deal with and manipulate some of these logos. Now there's one thing, one last thing I want to show you, and that's that I see a little haloing out here. Check this out. You see how we still have, we still have a little bit of this color. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. You definitely can't see it on that. Let's go ahead and find out where it looks the best. Maybe it's, maybe it's on stark white. So on that stark white, can you guys see that there's a little bit of a halo there? Well, we need to remove some of that. Now it's really easy to do that. If we just zoom out and we go and we select this, on this mask layer, we're going to take the lasso tool and I'm just going to go draw around the logo. So I'm literally just kind of drawing with my mouse around this logo. And I created a selection with the lasso tool around that logo. What I want to do is because a, like this close to the logo, everything is good. But as you reach the edges, Look at that halo that's starting to form, you know, that, that that color select sort of missed with that fuzziness selection. What I can do now is invert this selection. So I'm gonna do Shift Command I. So now everything outside of this logo is selected. Everything in this space is selected. So if I'm on my mask, what do I do? I just need to fill that in with black and it's gonna disappear. So I'm gonna do a fill and that's Shift F5. So if I do Shift, F5 that opens up the fill and I can select a lot of different things to fill the contents with but I'm just going to select black that's all I need to fill it with blending mode just leave it at normal everything just leave it normal opacity 100% hit OK and look at what that did to our mask down here it actually filled in that entire area and if I zoom in here and undo see how we even had edges here and that haloing you can't even tell but there is that haloing here and when I redo that it actually filled in everything outside of our logo with black. So that's pretty darn cool and that allowed us to have uh, get rid of any of that haloing so now we have like a really solid logo on transparency to use in whatever way that you need to use it whether it's black, white, the original color version, anything like that should work. So using all these tools that I taught you, I know this was super long, this was way longer than I expected it to be, um, using all of these is a way that you can remove white backgrounds from logos, also though from anything, I mean any picture. Let's say you have a product, I've done this countless times on like product image pictures that I wanna put as an isolated picture and I need to remove all the white from it. I just use these tools. And these aren't all the tools, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So there's lots of tools. I taught you some of them. There's lots more techniques and different ways that you can remove stuff. It just, every single instance is different. So here's some techniques. I hope you guys liked them. If you do like this video, if you have things you want to see, comment down below. Uh, make sure that if you have any questions, you also ask me or email me or whatever. I hope you guys learned a ton. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Subscribe for more of them. Check out the channel and I'll see you next time.